Hello, so I would like to be making a video on uh, commenting on Canadian politics and generally how I view our uh, neighbor to the north's political system based on what I've gathered from a fairly liberal-minded conservative uh, known as J.J. McCullum. And, uh, yeah, I've gathered that conservatism in Canada is far more liberal than it is in uh, the United States because generally conservatives here tend to very much conserve the traditional American political system with its anti-democratic notions um, and JJ being a Canadian conservative wants to is more for enhancing the d Canadian democracy which I am happy to see that that is something that is that uh, conservatives in other countries are generally for the uh, expansion of democracy instead of uh, its abridgment like it is with traditional or typical conservatives in the Republican Party here in the United States. So that is uh, something I definitely would see uh, that our Canadian conservatives are more liberal on even arguably potentially socialist because seeing that socialism generally is about the uh, democratization of all hierarchies and because so, uh, and giving you know people an actual fair say and fair shake in how society is run in all respects. Um, so, yeah, that is definitely a more left-wing position that Canadian conservatives tend to hold. And um, I would generally, I guess, be more... I don't know. I feel like there's some issues that... Uh, Canadian conservatives agree on that I would agree with and some stuff that the liberals would agree on that the conservatives wouldn't disagree on that I would agree with and then I feel like the NDP might have some others so I feel like in Canada I would be more of an undecided voter uh, considering some of the issues at play in America versus I mean, in Canada versus in America, I would be definitely more or less likely to vote Democrat unless a specific Republican came along, more along, I guess, the Rand, the Rand Paul type of Republican who was generally more freedom oriented. And but that would be if the Democrat was just the a typical terrible Democrat, I would probably vote for the Rand Paul type Republican in that circumstance. Um, but other than that, the Democrats seem to pass the snuff test on a aggregate basis of policy positions. Um, that Republicans typically don't. Um, and they, in my view, a number of Democrats, especially for my house, t state house seat, um, that I do, I'm not, my house representative has voted against abortion rights in Austin, which is, you know, National level, abortion rights aren't really discussed. State level is really where abortion really is a key issue. And he has been fairly conservative. 
more probably more liberal than the Republican would have been had they gotten into power, but still fairly conservative on abortion rights. Whereas I feel like in Canada, that's on a provincial level, that's not really an issue. And so well, I feel like, yeah, I'd generally be an undecided voter like, hey, you got to convince me. What's your key philosophy and what's your priorities? And even if, and on the stuff that we might disagree with, can you convince me that you're not as, you're open to, you know, how open you are to uh, compromise on those positions we don't really agree with? And how reasonable are you in your flexibility? And then I might consider whether voting for you despite in the aggregate despite disagreeing with you on certain positions so that's what I would generally uh, say for uh, my how I would be in Canada because I'm pretty firmly on the left in the United States and I would say firmly on the left overall but I'm generally uh, but Canada the conservatives in Canada do not seem to be as crazy as they are in uh, the United States. I mean, I'm sure they have, there are the crazy conservatives. I mean, they exist in every country, but they don't seem as widespread in Canada as they do in the United States. Um, and I do think that uh, JJ is definitely one of the more sane conservatives and actually really makes some pretty darn good points about Canadian democracy and the Québécois, which, I mean, generally I might, in their left-wing nationalism, I might have some more agreement with, but especially considering their, uh, what, they ban religious, uh, clothing or whatever in uh, public spaces. I mean, that seems to me a stretch too far. I mean, I generally agree religion is ultimately a detriment to society in the long run, but um, banning people's clothing, how they can dress, I think is a step in the wrong direction, regardless of your opinion on religion. That just seems to be an authoritarian a response when the actual uh, thing that should be done about religion is education. Because uh, when you educate people on the nature of, uh, of a reality, that tends to uh, take away the lit religious literalism with, the, with these texts and then you sh and then you expose um, them to and then through further education with uh, various uh, experiences of peoples that live these sort of sinful lifestyles as described in the Bible and you look and see that there's really nothing inherently wrong with living these sort of sinful lifestyles I mean the major thing that you could think of is that being is that doing this too much could be considered bad but other than for like generally but the bible doesn't really talk about that except for like you know the generally necessary uh, functions that we have like eating like it says gluttony is bad of course if you eat too much that's not healthy for you and so that seems perfectly reasonable that you describe it as not a good thing to do and but then homosexuality being a sin or uh, non procreative sex or masturbation well, I don't know if it's 
the Bible doesn't specifically mention masturbation, I don't think. But uh, I know it definitely says that homosexuality is sinful. And seeing that, you know, and by exposure to these things, we see religion not so much as a good thing. We see it as sort of more a historical fact that people used to believe this stuff, you know? And, hey, you might, there might be some, um lessons that care, still carry forward today that are some ba very basic general stuff like I mean uh, you've got like the golden rule or some version of being kind and stuff I mean I mean the Bible goes on to give multiple exceptions to those sorts of things but um, but that in a vacuum, yes, that's those are good values to hold and good things to do. So, yeah. Religion in that respect is, a, I would say, a good thing. In that it can, you know, elucidate opinions of the past. But, that does not... That's not to say that the religions overall are not toxic because of certain of the assumptions bedded within and the various um, sort of immoralities that are pretty uh, apparent within the religious texts and that the provisions are contained within. Now, uh, And uh, now a lot of people, no, that's not to say that people hold these opinion, can hold these opinions without the Bible. I would imagine it's certainly true that a lot of people uh, hold a very uh, bigoted opinions and then they, they're not super Christian, but they see the opinions echoed within the Bible and they go, aha. Uh -huh. God's on my side. Well, yeah, but you didn't come to that. You're not like your typical... Now, your typical Christian that was born Christian was born reading the Bible is going to go, Oh, being gay is a sin. Okay, I guess gay, being gay is bad. And so they le legitimately came to that position through their religion honestly versus a number of people probably didn't. And so... The main problem with that delineation is the fact that the Bible is endorsing homophobia in some very bigoted positions. And so the key thing to that is to say, look, the Bible should not be taken as a serious religious text or as a text that should be viewed religiously. It should be viewed skeptically and with a sane eye like we would view pretty much any text, whether it was sacred or not. It should not be given uh, sacred or it should not be treated like as a sacrosanct text of holy wisdom. It should be treated like just your average book that was written in the Middle Ages, probably filled with a bunch of nonsense. Some of it probably is some pretty valid advice. But a lot of it is not applicable to the modern day and shouldn't be because it's f appalling how people did things back then. And so that's generally how religion should be viewed, at least older religions. Modern religions, if they're remotely believable, they should still be viewed skeptically and any... Uh, crazy moral beliefs about it skeptically and criticized. Like I know Mormonism, that's a modern religion, but it keeps a lot of the barbaric moral 
moral paradigms of the past intact. Um, so it's not much of a transformative religion. Um, you would want like a new religion, sort of, I guess, a hippie religion that keeps sort of the spirituality of Christianity, but removes all the bigotry. Uh, and so that would ostensibly be sort of a great sort of, I, I, and maybe that's sort of indicative of the new age things that people tend to have, uh, go for nowadays, but yeah, I'm generally against the idea of religion just on principle as it's sort of like organized delusion or superstition. Um, and that it gives wrong incentives for belief. It re it incentivizes um, a particular way of thinking that humans are very prone to when, because it's very easy to fall into religious thinking. It's a fairly difficult thing to remove yourself from religious thinking because you could argue that humans are an inherently religious people and that we see phenomena and think, God did it. This can't possibly happen for completely normal reasons. It must have been a God in the sky that done did it to us. No. That's human irrationality speaking. And if we're wanting to survive, we need to move past our monkey irrationality irrational or irrational monkey brains and start thinking a lot more logically than we typically do and if we don't it will further continue down this path and so in that sense i would agree more with the uh Quebecois, but I more, I guess, a moderate, I guess a little, the term is lassite sort of uh, minded, and that I don't think religious clothing should be banned. Um, 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 now, depend now, you at least you can't ban religious clothing outright if you want if you're try, if no, there are some laws that say you cannot conceal your face and in that sense you can, you could that would ostensibly ban religious clothing that covers your face in public um so i would be fine i mean that sort of a clothing i could conceivably see a reason to uh if it's see a reason to sort of a uh, ban but re banning just religious clothes in general instead of uh, masks though I mean I'm even hesitant to do that except for in some in some circumstances so yeah but outright banning of religious clothing that seems ridiculous um it should be a uh, universal of things that cover your face so that you know now whether it's specific to certain circumstances so you can Use that clothing, but you can't go anywhere near a bank or a, or an expensive store with, like, security. Like, you can't be within a certain feet of a bank with a mask on or something. But, yeah. I mean, that's the only things I would argue for. And then 
Now, I am generally sort of a more states rights sort of a guy, but I'm all for states rights within reason. Like, uh, states can do things diff I think states should have freedom to do things their own way, but they shouldn't do so at the expense of minority rights. Um, and that's something that, unfortunately, the Quebecers want to do, which is very much antithetical to the notions of freedom and even left-wing values. So they, for a supposedly left-wing-oriented province, they seem to very much have a more right-wing oriented, more right-wing oriented policies. And then one instance in which I would agree with the conservative party is guns. Now I am an American left liberal, somewhat, I guess, more, more left-wing than liberal. Um, but, uh, yeah, and but the main th thing I disagree with on liberals is guns, because unfortunately the right people think of gun rights as a right wing issue. That's not really the case. The t traditional right wing parties favor gun rights, but it's not a right wing position. It is in fact a left wing position. The right wing position is that. Guns should only be in the hands of state authority, of a centralized authority. Whereas the left-wing argument would be essentially, or let's take the socialist, which you would argue, which people would say would be the most left-wing position, would be every 18-year-old citizen gets a handgun. be the government literally provides you a gun for free you obviously have to go th make sure you're not mentally insane or you know going or there's some criminal history that shows you will use this gun in a irresponsible manner but generally the populace should be given guns for free that would be the most left-wing answer to gun rights is that you are in type of at least this American Second Amendment. I don't know what the Canada Canada I assume doesn't have a Second Amendment like we do. So I don't so that probably wouldn't be something that would happen. But yeah, the most left wing interpretation of the Second Amendment is that the government has to provide you with firearms so that you can adequately defend yourself and your property. Um, so yeah, that's something I generally would agree more with the conservatives because, you know, because, uh, I mean, I'm surprised that the left wing has abandoned guns to the conservatives because if a civil war were to break out, that is just ensuring defeat because your side is not armed. Because when, because back in the day when civil wars broke out, it was between, like with the American Civil War, it was between two t distinct geographically defined entities. When more modern civil wars break out, it is not going to be that clean. It is going to be cities in shambles as two factions within society itself break up. Two or more factions fight against each other. It's literally going to be neighbor versus neighbor. As opposed to, you know, American Civil War. One neighborhood neighborhoods al aligning themselves with other neighborhoods against a col another alliance of neighborhoods, ostensibly the North versus the South. Modern civil wars are a modern civil war that would happen in, I would guess, 
U.S. or Canada would be much more messy than that would be much more messy. It would ostensibly sort of be more like the contested border states in the American Civil War, where it was literally brother against brother. Like, there, because there were definitely lots of more infighting because those states were much more divided on the issue of on north on siding north or south so yeah um in those cases i think i think gun rights is something that the left should embrace and we should increase our gun ownership rates so that should the right decide to start a civil war we are capable of defending ourselves instead of generally the pussy liberals that uh, a lot of the left or the more left-minded the ostensibly left-minded people tend to be um because i know like some more hardcore socialists tend to have armed have arms now i personally don't own firearms at least yet because i st one because i live in a city under my parents roof and they're not too into guns but i, ha I have done some training with guns and i do believe heavily in that now i might if i have kids i might that might i might not decide to get a gun that would be a major deal because one of the potential harms that's not necessarily uncommon is that sometimes is that there's been cases of kids, little kids finding guns and just accidentally shooting themselves and you don't want that. So, I mean, if I had a gun and a kid, I would make sure it would be locked up and generally with outside of their right reach so yeah that's some so yeah i would s say yeah but i am generally more socialistic minded and not in the because you know not in the failed leninist or stalinist or maoist fashion of uh uh, socialism or communism more in the uh, gradual voluntary uh, ways of uh, uh, co-ops and democratization and the only the only ostensibly sort of authoritarian measure that I think would be useful would be a law mandating a certain amount of democratization within workplaces so that workers get a larger say with um within their workplace and even then i would say it should only be minimal um i think generally um I would definitely be more inclined to force the introduction. I feel like if we sort of tr start, if we maybe, and of course, we'd ha I'd have to maybe try and do some more test runs, but I would say, I think if we do mandate sort of a very minimal form of democracy in the workforce, um, it could potentially take off because once, you know, you start to, because I do think that workers will start to feel more invested in the company that they're working at and they'll, their work will improve and their pay would like probably increase as well because they're getting pro a bigger slice of the wealth they're creating. And even with that sort of 
government mandate. Government is not seizing the corporations. They're mandating that more people have ownership and more of a say within it. So, now, in the sense that the government is controlled by the people, you could say it's more governmentally owned, but the state itself does not hold ownership. It is the uh, collective owners of the state that have more of a collective share and ownership in their uh, companies, which is much more socialistic, but very much more of a libertarian socialist sort of way, which is a minimal or a social libertarian, which is a a minimalization, a minimalized use of state power in a very specific targeted way to increase the liberty and the well-being of all of the citizenry. And that is where I think state power to affect socialism is best used instead of what the Marxist-Leninists did, which was basically full takeover on the part of the state. And then hope for the best that it doesn't become a corrupt state capitalist society, which it invariably did, especially under Stalin. And then in the destruction of the USSR, it led to an oligarchy. Um, now, not to the same, uh, similar to the US, but very but much, I would argue, increasingly more corrupt. Because in here we sort of have an oligarchy, ostensibly. The people still have much more freedom and political power than they do in Russia. Yeah. Because... There, Putin is ostensibly a dictator, whereas here, I mean, Trump kind of wants to make himself America's Putin, but we still have enough checks and balances to stop us from going completely down the Russia lane. And we're... Now, and with certain democratic reforms, we're going more and more, we're becoming more and more of a freer society. And so hopefully, we continue this streak and we don't elect more Donald Trumps. And for that matter, Joe Biden's. And we elect more or less sort of a Bernie Sanders style candidate. Not even necessarily fully Bernie Sanders. Who knows? Maybe Bernie Sanders goes too far. Maybe he doesn't go far enough. I'm not super married to Bernie Sanders. I know he's definitely going to be a lot better on major issues than the Republicans or the Democrats. And that's primarily my main concern. It's not so much to make America socialist or but make essentially America better, more democratic, which again ostensibly makes America more socialist in that sense. But generally, but definitely not in the sort of Marxist-Leninist sense. But more in sort of a voluntary phase that, if anything, incentivize, if not, and that more incentivizes maybe a t slight mandate, but more or less incentivizes in sort of a volitional way and allows for generally more favorable practice, more favorability 
and to lessen the strain on more socialistic business models like co-ops and any other sort of not traditional uh, corporate hierarchy that tends to exist. And so, which party I would vote for? I mean, it might be the NDP, though they've got, I would say, some bad qualities to them as well. Um, and so it really, I guess, I would generally put myself as a swing voter. Especially given that it really depends on the short-term politic, the Im immediate, the imperative short-term politics of it all. Like, because that te that also tends to uh, sway swing voters. So really, I would consider myself a leftist, and. Canada has a wealth of left-wing parties that uh, could uh, to avail me of that have varying takes on more leftist policies. The conservatives, a more right-wing, a more right-wing liberal take on a uh, democracy. The liberals, a slightly left-wing version of the liberal conservative, and then the uh, NDP that goes, takes different, and then the, what is it, the Maxine Bernier types, like a right-wing populist sort of deal, and the Libertarian Party of Canada. I guess possibly, though... There's sort of, if I guess there's if the other three parties aren't sufficient, I guess I might vote for them, though the Green Party might be better than the Libertarian Party. So uh yeah, though I'm not sure exactly if I were to move to the land of ma maple syrup, uh which party I would ostensibly uh, choose because I uh, have disagreements with all of them and which one I would choose to uh, vote for is uh, I would say a matter for debate.